My hammer didn't even go off. Gaming. It's something we all do. It's something we all have fun doing. And for some people, it's something they can make a living off of. About eight months ago, I started uploading videos with the lofty dreams of being the next kinda okay YouTuber. At first, I stuck to Geometry Dash, but I didn't want to be boxed into a niche. So, I started trying to upload Rocket League videos. But when I tried to record some gameplay, it came out as a mangled, sad PowerPoint. You see, all my videos up until now have been recorded and edited on a laptop. So now, I'm gonna change that. What if, instead of a dingy old laptop, I had my very own gaming PC, with an actually functioning graphics card and enough hardware to record whatever game I wanted? What if I actually bought a gaming PC? Well, you don't have to wonder, because that's exactly what I did. Let's go to the very beginning, to where this idea began. It was the middle of June, and me and two friends, Sean and Cade, got on a call and played a Pokemon randomizer. It was going well. I mean, I was losing, so that sucked, but aside from that, it was all going really well. That was until, completely out of nowhere, I got a white screen of death and lost all of my save data and all my recordings. I was pretty bummed out about that, so I just randomly said that I might want to actually build a gaming PC. At the time, I wasn't really sure about it myself, I more so meant it as a joke, but the idea grew on me more and more as the days passed, and eventually, I decided to go through with it. I was going to get myself a real, legitimate gaming PC. I let Sean know and he offered to help me shop for parts and build it. And if you don't know anything about me, know this. I suck with computers. I used to think that the monitor was the computer. I didn't even know what RAM was until like two weeks ago. I get to the task manager by typing it into the search bar. So obviously, if someone with expertise offers to help me, I'm gonna say yes. We went out, bought all the parts, took a week to educate ourselves on how exactly to do this, and then, finally, we met up and started building. I thought you were gonna do it. No, no, I don't know. You can, you can, cut, you can cut all that footage. <laughs> Probably put in the intro. Hey guys, we're, uh, we're, building, we're building a PC today, so... Yeah. Uh, this is all the stuff we got here. Um, Okay. <laughs> so I very, I'm very cool. Also, hi, this is a face reveal. Wow, yippee, nobody cares. Yeah. Now, I don't want to bore you with watching me be camera shy, so I'm just going to speed up everything back there and spend this time comparing my old laptop to the new PC. My old laptop uses a 13th gen Intel Core, reaching processing speeds of up to 1.7 GHz, while my new PC uses an AMD Ryzen 7 7700X 8-core processor, with speeds of up to 4.5 GHz. Both systems have 32 gigs of RAM, but the new PC has 1 terabyte of storage, as opposed to the 528 gigabytes on my laptop. But the most important things for me were the graphics card and the monitor. Now, when I said before that my laptop was god-awful at recording, I was misrepresenting how bad it was. It's actually way worse than what I said. The main reason? My laptop uses an Intel Iris XE. But now, thanks to Sean spotting a few bundles that saved hundreds of dollars of cart space, I was able to get the AMD AMD Radeon RX 7600 along with the MSI G2712F with a refresh rate of 180Hz. So just to sum it all up, I got a better CPU, better storage, better cooling, a better GPU, and a better monitor while spending less money than I did on the laptop. I think I did pretty good. For those of you here who, like me, also suck with computers and who also want to build their very own gaming PC, here are some of the most important things that I learned. First of all, if you have the time and the option to do so, go to Micro Center to build it. That was where I went, and they have a bunch of benefits when compared to other stores like Best Buy. They have tons of bundles for parts that otherwise would cost hundreds of dollars more. I bought my CPU, RAM, and storage in a bundle for $400, and without that bundle, that same purchase would have cost me $600. Also, they play much more of an active role in helping you design your PC to your liking. They make the list of parts, retrieve them for you, suggest the previously mentioned bundles, and double check all the parts to make sure they're all compatible. Compatible. Speaking of compatibility, let me explain how that works. Simply put, certain parts, namely the motherboard, CPU, GPU, and RAM, 
need to be from the same company. And the final tip that I have is that every now and then during the construction of your PC, do a test boot. Start it up, go to BIOS and make sure everything looks okay. Otherwise, you need to waste your time going back and deconstructing the PC to fix one minor issue that you could have solved so much earlier had you caught it. So, just to summarize, number one, if you can, go to Micro Center or a similar store that will actually help you get the parts you need. Number two, make sure everything is compatible. And number three, do a few test boots while building to catch any issues before they become a major problem. Oh, and one more thing, manage your goddamn wires. Welcome back from the time skip. The camera died. <laughs> um, the PC's done now. Yeah, there we go. It's a beauty. The cable management is actually not terrible. Usually whenever I manage cables, like all of the stuff that's in the back of the computer is in the front. I'm not going to include any of this, by the way. Oh, damn. <laughs> now that all that's out of the way, there's only one thing left to do. I'm going to record myself playing Rocket League, both on my laptop and on the new PC, so that I can finally see, once and for all, if this PC really was an upgrade. Hello, we are back on the bad laptop. So I have task manager pulled up over here. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go into rank two. Also, I am diamond three, I suck. Please don't flame me. And one more thing, all of my video settings are on the absolute minimum. They're optimized for performance, no like intensive graphics or anything, and I'm still at 90% CPU usage. And we're dropping frames. Oh, God damn, I suck. Okay. Absolute peak Diamond 1 gameplay right here. This is literal seconds after the last recording. Come on, please. Please. Hold. Oh my god. Uh, it's good there. It, it's good there. It's good there. It's good at the end. Yes! Oh, it works. Okay. <laughs> It's actually good! It was worth the money, let's go. <laughs> you, you have no idea how happy that makes me. And there it is. After months of not being able to record and play the games that I wanted, I can finally have fun making content on games other than Geometry Dash. So, what are those games? Well, for starters, Hollow Knight and Celeste. I still haven't played either one of them. I'm also probably gonna dabble into fighting games like Guilty Gear, and I'm still definitely gonna try some more Pokemon randomizers. And of course, the reason why I started this journey in the first place, Rocket League. So if you're excited to see some of those games on my channel, make sure to subscribe. Also, leave a comment down below on what games you want to see me play. Well, that's about all I have to say here. Gone it there. See you later.